<laughs> hey, Paula. Yeah, yeah. I hear you had a date with Raquel Welch. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I did, Jack. Well, I really... How was it, huh? Oh, it was, it was great. It was fine. We, uh, you know, went out to dinner, then we went to the movies. Yeah, <laughs> then what happened? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing. I, I, I took her home and I, I didn't even kiss her goodnight. <laughs> and they called me the dummy. <laughs> Can you top this? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Wink Martindale, and we'll have some laughs together for the next half hour on a show called Can You Top This? Thank you. Thank you very much. Welcome to our show once again, the show where you at home send the jokes and our panel of comedians try to top your stories. And of course, without your stories, we'd be in bad shape. We get a lot of good jokes from you and a gentleman who does a great job of telling your story, relaying it to our audience, Mr. Richard Dawson. Here he is. Fancy meeting you here on the joke show. You joker, you, how are you? Look at my hand, Wink. They're watching. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> Poetry day, Wink. Oh, is it? A poem. They sat on the porch at midnight, but her, his love was not to her taste. His reach was 36 inches, and she had a 44 waist. <laughs> uh, that's easy for you to say. It certainly is. I declare this affair open. <laughs> Here's the toast of television. Well, actually, uh, he's not the toast. He's more like a crumb. Maury Amsterdam. Oh, oh, hello, Maury. What are we talking about today? Uh, poetry. Poetry day. Poetry, poetry. Let's you see. Poem? One of the fine old poems. Uh, oh, sing a song of sixpence, a pocket full of rye. The guy must have been drunk. That's no place to carry liquor. <laughs> it doesn't rhyme, but he was drunk anyway. What's the difference? It didn't even make sense. Yes, no, I know. That. I'll drink to that. Here's a guy. <laughs> drink anything. Here's a guy who I like because he's very even-tempered. Nasty, but even. Paul Winchell. <laughs> Poetry! Maury! Poetry! I have a poem. The muse, the muse. And this really has a message for you bachelors out there. Oh. Go. Say it with flowers. Say it with eats. Say it with kisses. Say it with sweets. Say it with jewelry. Say it with drink. But always be careful not to say it with ink. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a guy who's a real loser. Here's a guy who is such a loser that he even gets a busy signal from dial a prayer. Jack Carter. <laughs> I am good. Henry Say Wadsworth Edward. Carter. Say Henry it. Wadsworth Longview. Longfellow. Edgar Allan Pugh. And from the depths of the sedan, there came a muffled curse. He was trying to fold a road map, same as it was at first. <laughs> Thank you, Jack, Paul, Maury, Richard. That's everybody who will be telling the jokes today on Can You Top This? And here's the way our show works. Our home viewer gets 25 bucks for having their joke told by the uh, gentleman named Dawson. His score is recorded on the computer. And then our panel of stars will try... <laughs> our panel of stars will try to top it. $25, in addition, goes to the home viewer each time one of the stars, Jack or Paul or Maury, fails to top Richard's score. Now, if all of the celebrities fail to top it, the home viewer gets $100 in cash. Rob Howe. And a fantastic <laughs> gift. What's the gift? An Ampex Micro 86 stereo cassette Ooh. tape player recorder. Wow. This one features instant play, easy-to-use controls, <laughs> matched speakers, and microphones from Ampex, the name preferred by professionals. Right. right. Okay, that's what we'll be playing for, and we'll get started with our first round of Can You Top This? Right after these words. Oh, all right, let's get started with our first round of Can You Top This? Our uh, category will be dentists. Oh, dentist jokes. This is going to be like pulling teeth. And... <laughs> did you really say that? Yeah, I just said it, yeah. Mrs. That Marnie... Me, my mouth was moving. It wasn't you. Yeah. Mrs. Marnie Fortney. A Marnie Fortney? Oh, I know her. A dentist story. Rich is going to tell it. 
Well, he has no complaints because this is a very good story. Now, this is two marvelous old ladies, very similar to the ladies that you only gave 77 to a few weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a chance for you to redeem yourself. And she had a terrible toothache, this, and she hated the dentist. The dentist was about 108 miles away. Only way to get there, by the train. She said, I can't go to the dentist. He'll hurt me. You stamp and grab hold of the gum and pull it out through my ear. I hate that. <laughs> she didn't won't do that at all. Now, here's a tablet to relax you. Just take this just as you board the train. It's sort of an early mill town. It'll cool your nerves for a little while. Sip a little grape out of the brown paper bag. <laughs> <laughs> and when you get to Elmira, which is halfway there, notice they'll say, Elmira, next stop. Pop another pill in your mouth and you'll just be, oh, you'll have such a time. I said, all right, fine. Old lady got on the train. Doctor came along. Is everything all right? She said, <laughs> oh, it's just fine, thank you. Mm. But it seems possible we've just crossed the date line. <laughs> Are we at Elmira yet? <laughs> she said, no, no, I'll let you know when we're at Elmira. She said, no, thank you. Every time he passed, she said, is it Elmira yet? No, no, I'll let you know. They're driving along, their train's going. Suddenly the conductor looked, went up to the driver, said, hold it! It's an old lady, they just asked me to put her off at Elmira. Well, how far are we past? She said, we're about 17 miles. You've stopped the train. This is a darling old lady. I can't do it to her. I promise her I'd let her know. Just back the train up. Back it up. He said, here we are, man. Elmira. Here we are. I'll help you off. Yeah, I don't want to get up. But Sister said, just take another pill when we get to Elmira. <laughs> I I'd like to... Uh, I told the punchline about three minutes early, but I just kept going, hoping, hoping my English friends That's a related. I'd like you to throw That's a right. That's 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 your gums will have to go. You've had it. 72. Maury, you got to top that. Maury. And the category is dentist. 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 I want to tell you something. We in the cities like, you know, in Beverly Hills and Hollywood, New York, the big cities where medical bills are really sky high, and you can't blame the doctors because expenses are sky high, you forget that in some of the small towns around the country, they have very, very proficient people in the various professions who do not charge a lot because they don't have to pay a lot where they are. But, and you forget that, uh, that their prices are a little more realistic. And it happened to me once, I was in Polk, Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know the money for me there. I sure do, and they send no regards. <laughs> and I must tell you that in Polk, Ohio, and I got a toothache. And when I get a toothache, you know, it's, uh, the whole thing goes, the whole face. I felt terrible. I went to this dentist and I said, he says, don't worry, so I'll take care of you, sit down, just relax. He goes, it's got to come out. Gave me a little uh, Novocaine jazz. Didn't feel it, pulled the tooth out. Nice job. I went to pay him. I said, oh, my gosh, I'm sorry, Doc. I left my wallet at the hotel. All I got with me is a quarter. I'm embarrassed. Well, he says, I, I guess I'll have to pull another tooth. I haven't got any change. <laughs> Eight, Mara, you topped the 72. Did you tell Mara yet? No, sit down. We'll let you know. <laughs> Paul Winchell, dentist. Uh, well, this story takes place in Polk, Ohio, also. <laughs> that is such a big town. But, Julia, well, yeah, these uh, dentist kind of things happen in some of the smaller towns, too. <laughs> anyway, this fellow walks into the dentist, and he had to have a molar extracted. And the dentist did a beautiful job. He pulled out the tooth, but suddenly the forceps sn slipped and the tooth <laughs> right to the guard's throat and he got panicky. The dentist said, now look, whatever you do, just don't panic. You'll be perfectly all right, but you better go to a throat doctor very, very quick and have him take a look. 
So he went to the throat doctor, and the guy looked, and he said, I don't see anything in your throat. He said, whatever it might have been, he says, probably has gone into your esophagus. I'm going to send you to a chest surgeon. So the fellow went over to a chest surgeon, still very, very anxious. The chest surgeon looked at him, checked him over, and he said, I can't find anything wrong with your chest, and whatever was there in the esophagus has probably gone into your stomach. I'm going to send you to a big gastric specialist. So he went up, wait, if wait. The this is going to be what I think. Let's get out of here now. <laughs> I'll stay for the stomach part, then we'll go to Pope. <laughs> you just wiped out 72. <laughs> anyway, I'm about to wind it up right now. Because after being told, I will go no further. <laughs> he finally goes to this little old German specialist from the stomach doctor, and the guy takes an x-ray. And he picks up the plate and he says, My goodness gracious, I have just discovered that you have a tooth growing in your stomach. You better go to a dentist. <laughs> Turn this place into a Who barn. asked you? <laughs> the way I heard it is the fellow accidentally swallowed an Who artificial eye. Right. Oh, oh the doctor said I see many an eye looking at me. What? 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 what I ever saw one looking at me. <laughs> Oh, Maury got a 77 on that, Paul. Here's the pride of Elmira. Here I am. An old lady was in a train, popping pills into her folk. When an Elmira... How did we get into this figure? A guy was in love with a girl, but she was really gorgeous, except for the teeth. Really, she had... Uh, one of these jobs. Looked like rope for cheese all the way. The kind of teeth she could eat corn through a picket fence. Really terrible teeth. Otherwise, the rest of it was gorgeous. So he spent all his money on teeth for this girl. The guy was a poor soul, working hard. He took thousands of dollars to get the best dentist in New York, and he did caps and things and put in, and now she was gorgeous. And, of course, the millionaire spotted her. She went into the show business, and she brushed the guy immediately. Never saw him again. And for years, he went around the world looking for her. My gosh, where can she be? And, and he never saw her again after giving her the teeth and spending all the money. She was off. And one day, he's in Europe, and he's in the south of France, in the French Riviera, there in a gambling casino in Monte Carlo. There she is, sitting next to Princess Grace, and she's gorgeous. With a lorgnette, you know, with a cigarette holder and the low-cut gown. And there she is, smiling and ha-ha, champagne. And he went up and says, hi, remember me from Elmira, huh? Remember I moved from Polk, Ohio to... Remember me? Oh, please come back with me, come back to me. And she laughed at him, ladies and gentlemen, laughed at him with his own teeth. <laughs> Laughs to get a 76, Jack. 76 teeth ain't bad. That's a good poke. That's the spirit. <laughs> All of our panelists stopped your joke, Mrs. Marnie Fortney. Oh. Did I tell you she was from Polk, Ohio? Uh, yes, yeah, she did. Yeah. Anyway, you get $25 for having your joke told on the air by Richard Dawson. And our thanks Don't for submitting your story on Don't Dennis. Again, you top this. We'll be back in just a moment.